And welcome to the Jeff Capel Show. My name is Jeff Hathorne. And you know you go to the store, you get those BOGO sales where you can get two for one. We've got kind of like a three-go thing going here. We have all three assistant coaches doing the Jeff Capel Show today, all one at a time. And we also have a special guest to tell you about a great event going on here at the University of Pittsburgh coming up on Wednesday. And we're going to start right off with Milan Brown, the assistant coach for the Panthers who joins us. Milan, how you doing? Doing good, Jeff. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, we're not shoveling as much as we thought, so that's good news. Uh, I, wa- right. I-, I wanted to ask you, as you guys, I know, turned into a more mental day today, and then you have one day before Florida State. Give us an idea of kind of the talk to the team as you prepare for the Seminoles. Yeah, well, the first thing, first things first, after every game, we had to make sure we um, we went over some of the, the good, the bad, I guess, and calling the ugly of the NC State game, and we always trying to make sure that the guys learn um, from their mistakes as well as learn from what happened positively. And today was not a hard day uh, as far as physically. We wanted to make sure we did a few things defensively, and then we went over some of their actions, half speed, just to make sure we give them just a taste of what's, going on, uh, what's coming down the pike with Florida State. So just wanted to get everybody on the same page early and uh, get our minds right back, um, I guess to say, back on the bike mentally. Is uh, another tough test is coming up Saturday. Milan, I, I know you work with the guards. I, I want to ask you about all of them, but I want to start out with freshman Femi Odakali. And w- where have you really seen his progression over the last couple of months? Well, I think the biggest thing for him is he's starting to grasp, uh, from a point guard standpoint, the biggest thing you can, which is what your head coach wants. <laughs> and so um, he's starting to understand that and how to run the team. Um, he's always had a good – been a good passer somebody that's uh, a willing passer as well and he can find a few passes that maybe other guards can't because of his size he has really good size um so and he's a good defender he's been very good for us he's been in the guard one through three um gets deflections does a great job of walling up and contesting shots uh, the biggest thing with him is just trying to con- continue to improve um on his shooting and uh his free throw shooting uh, that should be much higher. I think that's a little bit more mental than it is anything to do with his stroke. But we've been impressed. He's, um, he's come in and done some things that we thought he would be able to do, so that's exciting. Lon, when you look at his frame and his speed, like he seems to have all the tools to be an elite defender. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And, and the great thing about that is he, he already has some of that mentality. He, he doesn't mind uh, taking on the challenge of guarding some of the better guards in our league. He knows he's going to have to, and he enjoys it. So uh, with his frame and his length, um, some of the toughness that he can bring to the table with that, he should end up being one of the better guards in our league uh, for sure on the defensive end. And then if he combines that with continuing to take care of the basketball, finishing plays in the paint and improving his stroke, uh, he's going to have a chance to be a really good ACC guard. We're joined by a Panthers assistant, Milan Brown, here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers radio network. And, uh, you know, Ithiel Horton is a guy, and he's admitted this on this very show about his confidence. Do you finally see that confidence growing where he believes that he belongs at this ACC level? Yeah, I think so. And, and I can understand that coming from his situation where he played at, in the, uh, the CAA and had a good season and had to sit out a year and um, just trying to get his feet wet again. But I think, you know, we've had to talk to him a little bit, and he's been good about it where we're just – we're, we've played enough games now. You, you're shooting 40% from three. Like, you can play. You can play. I know it's been a tough year for Nike Sabandi because of, you know, getting the late start with the team because of the NCAA decisions. Do you find him at all starting to settle in? What's been the biggest, uh, the toughest adjustment for him uh, with his new teammates? Yeah, here? We, we, he's one of the guys that comes up in the coaching meetings a lot. It, we just feel really bad for him it, because it took so long for him to get into the swing of things and they finally let him play. We're halfway through. He's trying to make sure that he is caught up with what we're trying to do, and he's done a good job of that. Um, but you just you cannot make up that time in early De- December, November, October, where we're putting in things and trying to get a feel for how we're going to play. He usually was on the scout team and giving us a great look because we knew he wasn't going to be able to play. And so now he's jumped into – well, now you need to do the things that we need you to do. And um, you know, I think that has put him behind the eight ball some because he is a talent and um, he's competitive. He can score the basketball. He's shooting 35% from three. 
but you can tell because he is a he is a good finisher and he's not finishing the way he's capable of. And I think some of that is him trying to do everything right in order to get on the court instead of believing what he can do within our system and then just go play. So, um, but again, there's some time left. He's shown some pop here and there, and, and, and we'll hang in there with him. And then he'll have some games for us here down the stretch that everybody will say, oh, okay, that, that was the guy we thought we brought in. Milan, there, we've seen it from Xavier Johnson this year. There are times they're like, wow, he's done some things in, in games that have just wowed. And then there's these moments here or there. How would you evaluate his season? Yeah, I think it's been we've, – we've all been on the same roller coaster he's been on. <laughs> and, um, and it's a little bit unfortunate because I think – because of who he is and what he has done over his career, and he realizes this, everything that he does is scrutinized a little bit more. And you are going to be on one of the top guys on everybody's bulletin board as far as the scouting report. And we have some other good pieces, so we've asked him to do a few other things and not necessarily have to carry the load as far as scoring and getting all the assists and things of that nature but he still leads the ACC in the fifth. And so he's a good player, and he's done some really good things for us, and he's it's just a matter of being consistent throughout because, as you mentioned, Jeff, that may happen in the game too. Right. It will be 10 minutes of, wow, look at this, and then all of a sudden there's a five-minute spurt, and you're going, I wonder why that happened. And – Sometimes the frustrating thing for him is he's thinking the same thing. Like, I wonder what happened. And so we're going to hang in there with him. He's talented. He's done some really good things for us on the court, off the court, for our program. And I think the consistency is the biggest thing for him, being consistent in more phases of the game because that's what's required when you are the point guard of the ACC team. Well, Milan, you know, it's a great research institution here at the University of Pittsburgh, so we're going to get them to work on a consistency pill that you can give all your guys. <laughs> and <laughs> then we're not, we're not going to market I it. Need two extra, <laughs> hey, I need two extras for my daughter so I can get to this home <laughs> school, video school, and whatever this is called. Yeah, hey, hey, best of luck. Maybe the court can be an escape from homeschooling. Uh, for all absolutely, of us. Absolutely. We, we appreciate you. I appreciate the support all the time. All right, Milan. Thank you very much. And we continue. He coaches the swing men. He is the brother of the head coach. Jason Capel will join us here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Joining us here on the Jeff Capel Show is Pitt assistant coach Jason Capel, a former head coach himself who's at ESPN for a few years. And, Jason, that's where I want to start. I mean, was the media so bad that you could only take three years of it before you had to go back to coaching? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I uh, started doing TV. And that was the first thing I did when I wrapped up my playing career with both uh, Raycom Sports and ESPN. Coach, uh, I was there five years. And, as you said, got back into it, was really enjoying myself. But, you know, when my brother says, I'm going to pit and I need you and I need you to help help me build this thing, uh, there wasn't a lot for me to think about. You know, one of my favorite people along with my parents on earth. And, you know, anytime my brother says he needs you, you know, you, 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 you drop everything and you're there for him. So although I enjoy TV, I also enjoy coaching. And uh, to be able to do something, build something, uh, with my brother, you know, it's pretty special. So your brother goes to Duke. How do you end up at Carolina? Here's the thing. I mean, when you grow up in the state of North Carolina, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you're able to, if you have an opportunity, um, if they recruit you, <laughs> most kids growing up in the state want to go to North Carolina. Um, I was no different. Then when Jerry Stackhouse and Rasheed Wiles and Jeff McGinnis, who were ironically in the same class as my brother, when they went to Carolina and the brand of basketball that they played, 
you know, I, I already wanted to go to North Carolina. But when I saw them and, you know, what they were able to do and their development and things like that, the biggest decision for me was choosing between going to Carolina, which was my dream, and playing for my dad, who at the time was at Old Dominion. That was the toughest thing for me. And uh, thankfully, luckily, you know, he made it easy for me. Adis, Tony, I, I know that, you know, Jeff has described him often. I, I believe the words he uses, like heart and soul, and he's the, the, you know, the heartbeat of this team. How would you describe coaching Adis? It's been fun in the sense that, you know, when we recruited Aldis, uh, Aldis, uh reclassified and came out a year early, you know. And so at the time, you know, spotting him on the recruiting circuit um, in that short window we had when we got hired and then developing the relationship and uh, getting he and his family to trust uh, that we had their best interests and uh, we're going to help develop him. Um, there's been a bond there. And to watch him grow from – you know, a guy that came in as a freshman that, you know, had to play out of position and power forward uh, for us to how he's developed each year and gotten better. Um, and, and the key word there is development. I mean, he's developed to a guy that, you know, always had the athleticism, the toughness, you know, that, that wouldn't back down. But now to be a guy that can, that can make shots, that can read screens, that can handle the ball, that can facilitate, as well as always being one of the best defenders. So watching his maturation – um, being a part of his, you know, development and seeing how he's grown and how he'll continue to grow um, has been a fun process to be able to witness firsthand. Yeah, he's a real glue guy for you, for you guys. I, and I know another guy who's developed and, and improved so much is Justin Champagny. What What do you think has led to what we're seeing now? You know, both guys have a natural toughness about them, you know, uh, I mean, both guys, uh, at their best, they play with an edge. Um, and I think Justin Justin just has a natural ability. He has a nose for the ball. Um, I mean, there are a lot of things that he does that you just can't teach. It's just having a want to, knowing where the ball is going to be, pursuing it, um, blocking shots, having good timing, things of that nature. The skill stuff we try to develop is obviously an outside shot, being able to bounce the ball, um, one or two dribbles and get to a spot, being able to read defenses, and just trying to continue to make he and all these uh, all-around players. Um, they both have a natural ability to rebound the ball and things of that nature. But with Justin, man, a lot of who he is, that's just who he is as a person and, and as a player. The thing we say all the time, when you, when you play those positions, in my opinion, and, and they hear me say it all the time, like when I say, what's your job? Well, your job's everything. Your job at times is to score, is to rebound, to be a good defender, you know, to, 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 to block shots. To, to facilitate, like that's your job. And, you know, those are the guys that I think those those guys can plug a lot of holes on both ends, and that's what I've tried to instill in Justin and Deese, that you have to be guys that are multifaceted, that can uh, contribute to the game and affect the game, you know, in a lot of different ways. Jason Capel, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, best of luck on Saturday. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, Jason Capel here on the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network as we continue a very special event coming Wednesday to campus as we'll inform you what it is on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Welcome back to the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Kristen Lane from Vitalent joins us now. And, Kristen, we appreciate your time. We know there's a huge event coming uh, to the campus coming up on Wednesday, a big blood drive. What can you tell us about it? Well, first of all, we are really grateful that the Panthers are hosting this blood drive. And we invite all fans and everyone else to come out to donate blood and save lives. So we'll be at the Pete on the club level from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. next Wednesday. And every donor is automatically entered into our raffle. We have really uh, cool stuff to give away, game tickets, official Pit Panthers gear, some other surprises. Sweet. And here's something really interesting. Every blood donation is going to be tested for COVID-19 antibodies. And this will let donors know whether they've had COVID in the past 
even if they were completely asymptomatic. So if uh, people's blood test positive, Vitalant is going to produce convalescent plasma from that donation, and that plasma is used to treat patients who are currently battling the disease. So it's the antibody-rich plasma that gives patients an extra boost to fight the virus. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, I hadn't thought of it from that standpoint, because one of the questions I wanted to ask you is I know people get get worried about being anywhere in, in public nowadays, and understandably so. What are some of the measures that, are, that you guys uh, go through to make sure everybody's safe? Oh, we do it all. <laughs> huh. uh, first of all, it's important to know that uh, blood drives have been uh, named an essential function by both the CDC and FEMA. So we are taking every precaution possible. We follow the CDC guidelines. Uh, before anyone donates, they have to have their mask on and our staff wear masks. You get your temperature taken before you come into the blood donation area. And we are wiping down all touch, uh, high touch areas, I should say, every uh, time someone gets near them, I say, I, I don't even like to stand still at a blood drive because I'll get sprayed down with cleaner. <laughs> so uh, it's very, very safe. We social distance all of the, uh, the blood donation cuts. And what's really important to remember is uh, there is no substitute for human blood. And even though we have a pandemic going on, Patients in uh, our area hospitals still need that blood. So that's why it's especially important for everyone who is able to donate and who's healthy. Please come and help save lives. I think we, we hear about it when there's a natural disaster or something maybe happens that touches one of us. But it's something that, correct me if I'm wrong, that is needed year round. And, and you don't often think about it because other things come up. You're absolutely right. So we all do hear about the big disasters. Um, we had one here, unfortunately, in Pittsburgh two years ago uh, with the Tree of Life shooting. But hospitals have a constant need for blood day in and day out. And that's because there are many, many reasons uh, for patients needing blood. For example, if you're undergoing elective surgery or even emergency surgery, uh, people who are receiving treatment for cancer, something that a lot of people don't know is that when you are undergoing chemotherapy, the uh, chemotherapy drugs not only kill the cancer cells, they often kill your platelets. So you need platelet uh, transfusions. And there are many, many people who have chronic conditions that require uh, blood transfusions on a regular basis. So all this is going on every single day at the hospital, and that's why uh, we do need blood. And I have one more uh, interesting fact to share yeah. with you, and a lot of people don't know this. It's the blood that's already at the hospital that saves lives when there is an emergency. And the reason is because it takes about 48 hours to test and process and ship newly donated blood to the hospitals. So that's really interesting to keep in mind. Kristen Lane from Vitalin. How do, how do you sign up, or can you just show up day of between 9 to 2 at the Pete on, on Wednesday? Well, we prefer that you sign up, and that's because it'll be more convenient for you. You'll have an, an appointment, and you don't have to wait. We have two options. You can click or call. Visit vitalent.org slash pit, and all the prompts are there. Or you can go old school and give us a, a call at 877 877- 25 vital V I T A L that's 877 25 vital Well Kristen thank you so much best of luck on Wednesday and I I did hear there's some really cool prizes so if you come out get in the raffle there's an opportunity not only to help your fellow man but also to maybe walk away with a cool prize so thank you and best of luck Thank you so much 9 to 2 Peterson events and right here on Wednesday for the Big Pit Blood Drive. And we continue. Tim O'Toole, the associate head coach, will talk big men as we continue here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pit Panthers Radio Network.
Welcome back to the Jeff Capel Show. It is our third guest of the day. Associate Head Coach Tim O'Toole joins us. And Tim, I want to jump right into it because I've been impressed with the improvement from Abdul Kareem Koulibaly this year and him stepping into the starting lineup and some of the progression he's made. What's really jumped out to you, Tim, about the, the steps that uh, Kareem has taken? Well, Jeff, it's great to be here, by the way. I think with Kareem, and I'm glad you brought that up, is just that uh, it's really has been his maturity. And, and he's always been a mature kid, but to kind of come in in this year with there's so much change going on was that he's really been the most consistent big that we've had. And, uh, and that being said, you know, he played, he played intermittently his freshman year, but this year, he, again, he, he's been the kind of rock of Gibraltar force inside and, uh, and he does it on both ends, but specifically the defensive end. And, you know, again, I know you've had Milan and Jason on it and obviously coach Kate, but it's, you know, defense is our staple. And the one thing he's done a real good job has been in his defensive coverages. And, um, and, and, and I think that's been a, a big strength of his that, that has enabled him to play not only a lot of minutes, but, but as well as he had all year. And, and people forget he's only played basketball for a few years. I mean, the stuff he's picked up and the progression he's made just in the last year uh, is impressive. And I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you guys do as well, obviously. I look forward to see as he continues to grow. Yeah, no, I, I mean, there's, there's so much more upside for him. And, and the one thing about AK – uh, that's his nickname, um, is that Kareem, you know, he, he's, uh, he's like a Euro big, right? He's very skilled on the perimeter. And, you know, the reality is a lot of the teams we've played recently have bigs that are, that are power bigs. Um, and so he's kind of getting a little bit of taste of, of, of that world. And, uh, and it's a very physical world. So it can be very, very physically debilitating over the course of the season. Um, but I do think, again, that that's something that we're learning right now. He's learning. Um, but when he just keeps maturing and growing and getting better and better, uh, his future is really bright. We're joined by Pitt Associate Head Coach Tim O'Toole. And I want to ask you about a couple of the younger guys. We haven't seen them as much on the court, but I know they're working hard and, and part of the, uh, their progression is coming at practice. What can you tell us about Noah Collier and Max Madison? Yeah, no, it, it's funny. Uh, Jeff, when I worked at Duke back in the early 90s, or the mid-90s, I should say, when, when Jeff was there, Capo was playing there, one of the things Coach Krzyzewski reminded the staff was that we had to make practice competitive. And how you do that, meaning the starters had to go up against, you know, a really talented next next group. And I think that's, you know, as you just mentioned um, with Noah and Max, they're both really talented guys, and um, and, I, and I think we're better. We're, we're, it's been such a crazy year, um, but we know day in and day out that, that we're better than where we started from. And Noah is one of those guys. He's been sent back with a few injuries throughout the year, um, but, I, but I do think, especially at this time, you know, it, when you become a good team is when guys are fighting to get minutes. And, uh, you know, and some of the, we, I know we talk about it the staff all the time, how can we get some of these guys additional looks, but – you know, it's one of the things when you're a good team, you have other good players in front of you. And, uh, you know, but the good thing about that is that you have guys behind you that are chomping at the bit. And that is Noah. I think, um, again, I think he's, he's probably further ahead defensively right now than he is offensively. But that being said, even when we recruit him, he was one of the best offensive rebounders I saw in the country. And, and that, that is still one of his strengths. He's a great knack for the ball. Um, but I do think, you know, he's one of these guys defensively that is so long and rangy that he's very disruptive. The schedule has changed again. Instead of playing Clemson on Sunday, it's now Florida State Saturday at 4 here on the Pitt Panthers radio network. And, uh, Tim, I don't need to tell you Florida State's playing pretty well. Uh, blowout of Virginia. They're second in the league in, in shooting and field goal defense. What can you tell us about the, the challenge you guys are going to face Saturday? Well, you know what? It's funny. It's, this whole year, is, uh, as you know, has been highly unpredictable. And as you mentioned, we were supposed to play them on January 9th. That didn't happen. Then all of a sudden it was supposed to be, I believe, February 7th, and that didn't happen. And so the one thing that, that is important for our guys is that, you know, you, you have to be able to, at the drop of a hat, be ready to play and, and who, whoever's going to be in front of you. And the, obviously the thing about this team that's coming in here, Florida State, the, the word that, that – I always think about when you're dealing with them, and you just mentioned the shooting, 
but it's they're unbelievable. They're tough, right? And that's kind of what Pitt has always been known for. And so it, it, it's almost hidden because they, they do all these other things. They do them really well. But they are an unbelievably physically tough basketball team. And then when not only are they physically tough because that's usually on the defensive end, but then when they can shoot the ball and score, the, you know, at the level that they're doing it is, it just makes them that much that much more difficult to play. But but the reality is for what who we are and what we're trying to do, we've played them really well since we've been here in the last two years. Um, you know, they're going to attack you from a lot of different areas, like. The kid MJ Walker is playing as well as anybody in the league, and he he's a guard. They have such sturdy play, you know, from Raekwon Gray and, and Osborne. But then the other thing that they always seem to have is tremendous depth. And, and Scotty Barnes is one of the best players in, in, in the country, who's now coming off the bench. Polite, who started for them in years past, coming off the off the bench. And the kid Balsa Kaprika um, is another one of these guys that was a top thirty player that's coming off the bench. So. They kind of do it in, in, in waves at you, and um, and I think that's one of the things they try to do is they try to grind you over the yeah. course of that of, of the forty minute game, and um, and we need to be able to come back and fight them back and 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 get back in winning ways on our end. Yeah, Tim, uh, best of luck. We appreciate your time. Good luck. Four o'clock Saturday here on the Pit Panthers Radio Network. Our thanks to Tim to Milan Brown, to Jason Capel, and to Kristen Lane from Vitalent. Remember, 9A to 2P right here at the Pete on Wednesday.